Can you tell me a little bit about your day today? You wake up, and then what happens? Wake up, make sure my sons are in school, and then drive all over creation, looking at these young, pretty girls. You go anywhere and crack your finger. Anywhere. That's this. Crying station. Instagram. Instagram. Facebook. Uh, County jail. Uh, all that dinners. First comes the seduction. Then comes the reality. After a couple of days of drinking and smoking, now you gotta go off the street. This is a story about pimps. How they work, how they think, and what they'll do to grab their share of the billion dollar market for illicit sex in America. Out here, in these streets, you're either a predator or you're a prey. You're either a sheep or you're a wolf. I'm not saying what I do is right, but I'm a wolf out here to survive on these streets, because I'm not going to be no sheep. first time I ever did it, it was a complete rush. And then you just kind of start to get used to it. What is it like when you're, you're out there? It's cold. It's really cold. This is a good amount of clothes. We've seen girls out there in just like a bra and underwear. In the winter? In the winter, in the rain. A lot of them can't leave until they're told that they can come back in. By their pimps? Yeah, pimps. Is it dangerous? Oh, it's extremely dangerous. Vehicles pull up to us that you don't know if they're just going to roll by and just start shooting at you. Like a rival pimp that you're working for someone, and that's technically their enemy. So instead of going after the pimp, they're going to go after the girls. How often are you approached by pimps? Almost every time we're out there. And you've been doing this for how long? I've been doing this for around three years. Was it soon after you joined the police department, or? Um, it was a good chunk of time after. Michelle, as we'll call her, is one of two Oakland police officers who will be going undercover tonight as decoys. So well, how do you We have people say? very close. Watching. Mm -hmm. And we do have our firearms on involvement. Oh, you, you take a gun with you? Yeah. Where? <laughs> we make it work. Sex trafficking has become front page news recently, thanks to high profile cases like that of multimillionaire Jeffrey Epstein. For several years, Epstein was operating a sex trafficking ring. Not long ago, sex trafficking was thought to be largely a transnational problem, with criminal networks smuggling undocumented women across borders to work as sex slaves. But there's a far more common variety happening in every US city big and small, that sees Americans exploiting other Americans. No state reports more cases than California. And by all accounts, Oakland is a hot spot. Thanks, everyone, for being here. We're doing a decoy operation today. It's very dangerous for the decoys. Stay out of sight, keep close. If we do arrest a pimp, we're going to call a code three response for an arrest. The goal of the operation is to disrupt business around one of California's most notorious prostitution tracks, International Boulevard in East Oakland. It's a place where pimps have long been known to sell underage girls. You guys used to go after mainly the women working on the streets, and you've since shifted and are now going after the traffickers and the johns, the demand as well. When, when did that happen? October of last year. Yeah. Just October of last year? Yeah. Pretty recent. Yes, change. pretty recent change. And we want to target what's fueling the demand here in Oakland. We want to go after the exploiters, the ones that are victimizing our young women. So by attacking the demand and making people know that Oakland's not a place that's going to tolerate forcing people into prostitution. Lieutenant Jimmy Beer is the commander of the vice unit and my guide for the evening. When a John pulls up, they pull up real slow, kind of to check out the girls, see how they look. Window shopping, I hate to say. Pimp, on the other hand, they want to make it known. They're the big dog in this neighborhood. So they usually swoop up onto the corner really fast. Anything intimidating, like do a burnout and take off at a really high rate of speed. 
got a male Hispanic on foot talking to the girls right now. Sloop single on the dude with the bald head. Hey, for me, just got into a white 80s model Toyota pickup truck. Yeah, that's it right there, positive ID. What's happening, you see that? Yeah, they're arresting right now. The decoys move several blocks away and start working on another corner. Within minutes, the car pulls up. He's hauling ass to get out of yeah. here. That's him. What do you find with the majority of these uh, Johns? What's sort of the profile? As you see already, it's been like one male Asian, one male Hispanic, uh, one male black. Typically, there'd be a male white next, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to bet. And young, old, married, single. All of that. All of that. Yeah, there's no real profile of a John. There's a male in a Lexus hanging out the window with a gun. Oh, I might have a guy pointing guns at the prostitutes. Quickly, it becomes clear that they could arrest Johns all night long. But it's not the Johns they're really after. We're trying to draw the pimp out, lure him out from behind the shadows, try to get them to actually recruit one of our, our girls, and then we go after him. You think they're making more money as pimps than they are if they were selling drugs? Yes. Why? There's more of it. There's more demand. You don't have to buy the product, so I don't have to come out of pocket. I don't have to package it. I'm not being at risk for holding on to it. Renewable product that never expires as long as she's still alive. And if she's alive, she better be making money. The challenge is actually finding them or getting them. That's it. Our fight against human trafficking is one of the great human rights causes of our time, and the United States will continue to lead it. We will not rest until we've stopped every last human trafficker and liberated every last survivor. The fight against trafficking seems to be one of the few issues that transcends politics. But all of that attention hides an ugly truth, that busting sex traffickers is extremely difficult in part because their victims are often afraid to testify. It's more difficult to solve these cases, I would venture to say, than murder Target charges. Vehicle. For these pimps, that means the risk is relatively low and the profits sky high, a combination that must be irresistible, which is exactly why I want to find one. Cash, cash, cash. I will not stop till I'm 50 rich. I made a dial out of 50 cents. I made the trip of a 50 bricks. My search begins on Instagram. That's where I learned that pimps have their own ecosystem of hashtags. There's this one, hashtag 304. If you turn around 304, it actually spells ho. Can't show a lot of these faces, but hashtag game related, PGO, pimp game on, HGO, which means ho game on, hashtag IZM, which is like the swagger, more jewelry, more diamonds, this display of wealth and power, these stacks of cash, all of this is just a way to show these women what their lives could be like if they were working for them. I have no idea if any of these guys are actually pimps or just playing the part. But for some, it certainly feels like their social media feed is the marketing arm of their operation. Doesn't seem like they're very ashamed or trying to hide what they're doing at all. In fact, they want to show it off. Over several weeks, I messaged countless guys and a few women asking if any of them would be up for talking. I get mostly silence. Then finally, a breakthrough. I stumble upon a genre of book I didn't know existed, the pimp memoir. That's how I found Mickey Royal. Sure enough, the author of The Pimp Game agrees to meet me at a motel in the heart of South Central Los Angeles. I'm hopeful that Mickey will be the key to finding my way inside his former profession. How are you? Mariana. Mickey Royal. Hi, Mickey. Yes, so nice to meet you. Same here, likewise. I didn't really start really pimping until I was about 19 or 20. I came from a drug and gang background, so I always thought of that particular life as being weak, you know, because if it didn't involve a pistol, I wasn't interested. But it was something about the allure of it. It just sucks you in, and I fell in love with it. 
know I'm pretty. The allure of pimping is no secret. Now I want you to get yourself together and get back out there and get me my money. From movies to music videos to Seinfeld. Very few underworld figures have gotten as much love from pop culture as the pimp. But I want to know how the business of pimping really works. Mickey offers to take me for a tour of the most infamous track in LA. Where are we heading? Where are we going? Oh, we're headed to Figueroa. It's referred to as the track, the blade. It's been around since the 60s. We're talking about 95 blocks. Wow. 95 blocks. How dangerous is it, do you think? It's extremely dangerous. You got the tricks you have to worry about. You have upset in the pimp you have to worry about. Kidnappings, stabbings, shootings, plenty of them. You're talking about a profession where sexual assault and rape are just occupational daily hazards. So I've lived in Los Angeles for over 10 years, and I know Figueroa, but I've never seen any of this till tonight. That's why I call it the shadow world. It exists at night and broad daylight. She's working to the right. Oh, she's wearing a bikini. Yeah. It's also freezing. It's 46 degrees outside. I mean, you got to understand, if they have pimps or whatever, if they can make extra money by being seen from a distance, they're not even allowed to wear jackets. See how they both were naked? More than likely, they have the same pimp. It, was that a thing where your girls that worked with you dressed the same? Yeah, because he either shop for all of them at the same time. So all these three girls have the same shoes. Does that mean that they work for the same pimp? More than likely. She was so young. She looked like she was like 15 or something. Did you see that? Yeah, you'll see a lot of those. I mean, it's dozens and dozens and dozens of women that we've seen so far in what, about 20 blocks, right? Right. You should see them on Friday and Saturday night. It's like a concert. So where would you be? Imagine a girl would be on this corner. Where would you be? Sitting in the car. Not far away, but oh, I'm watching my her. On. Yeah. Why? to make sure she's OK. And I figured that was my job. And if you had more than one girl, how do you do you that? You cruise around. You might sit here for about 10 minutes until she gets a day, see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And then you cruise up to see this one. You mm -hmm. pull up on one, you collect your money. But she's not going to get any dates while you're sitting there. We've been circling the same stretch of blocks several times when Mickey gets spooked. OK, that's, uh, we got to go what somewhere happened? else. That's it. Why? What happened? Well, it's starting to get hot. What do you mean? What did you? Once we got made as far as the cameras, what happened is they'll start telling everybody what they saw and pointing out the car. Like, what if we take a right and take one last trip? You up? don't want to do that. Really? No. You want to call it a night right now. Trust me. I follow Mickey's advice, but I'm still hopeful he can connect me to an active pimp. So we've been working on this story for a long time, and it's been really hard to get people to talk to us, especially people who are currently in yeah, you won't get that. I mean, if you were currently doing it, would you even admit no. it to us? You hopping out with the cameras, you're better off pulling guns on me. No. Guns, I'll challenge the camera out to run. No. Why not? Because if you want to get away with a crime, it has to be a secret. Simple as that. After our interview, Mickey pulls me aside. He gives me a name, a number, and a promise. One phone call later, doors begin to open. Hi, it's Mariana here. How are you? Hi. Mickey gave me your number and said that you'd be willing to talk to us. We'd love to meet with you at a place somewhere in Inglewood, if you're available. Yes. OK, and you're bringing some people that work with you, right? Right. That hotel, is that the place you want to meet? Right. Have yes. you worked out of there? Yeah. So we've run to this motel room. It's a place that they've said they've worked at before. Um, we were supposed to meet here an hour ago. They still haven't showed up, but we're, you know, we're hoping they will. It's been really hard to get people to talk to us, so it sounded really positive, and I'm hoping that they will, they'll show up tonight. Oh, 
Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, Mariana. How are you? I'm fine. Come on in. Thanks for meeting us here. Because I know you guys want us to discuss your identity, so we actually got all these masks here for you. It's more of me. That's a really pretty one. It's funny because uh, when I looked at them and I was trying to figure out which one I would wear if it was me, I changed my mind about three times. Right. <laughs> Perfect. Are you yeah. gonna um, here over this? That's what I like this. So we're very close to Figueroa, which is one of the most famous tracks or blades oh, yes. in Los Angeles. Have you guys ever been out there? Yes. I have. So very, yes. Yeah. Do you think that a lot of the women that are working out on the, the blade, the track, they all have pimps? I say 80% of them do. Yeah. I say yeah. Did you have a pimp? Um, when I first started out, no, I was just, hey, let's get away. You know what I mean? But I did try it out. Like, guys wanted me to be they hoe. And, you know, I would hang around them or kick it with their female and see how their environment was, and it just wasn't for me. It was a lot of violence, it was a lot of jealousy. I didn't see where the money was going. Why do you think other women do it then? Daddy issues. Seeking attention, might have been molested. Mm. Might feel that they need to be valued by a man and not really know they value for themselves. There's a lot of people that grow up in broken homes. And not having that father figure is like a huge part in a young girl's life. When you don't seek and get that love that you deserve, it pushes you to a whole nother state that you can't really explain or describe. You just feel the pain. Do you think that the pimps know that and they exploit that? They go yeah, after they, those? That's how they abuse mm -hmm. That's how they get you to never leave. And that's why most girls that's my age, they get stuck. Mm -hmm. And they live like that for a very long time. The more we talk, the more I realize how many different ways women are pulled onto the streets. This is a woman we'll call B. Prostitution is not her day job, just something she does after her shifts as a nurse. And for school. So it was like, I'm doing it anyway. Why not? I mean, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed of it. So it's like, it ain't no need to be ashamed. Everybody having sex. Don't you ever fantasize about being a stripper? Yeah, you see, this is the part where I'm not sure if I should be nodding or not. Exactly. <laughs> Honey says she works primarily with clients from the business world. I'm very high price. I mean, I make a lot of money doing what I'm doing. She says she can make as much as $20,000 a week. But all that money comes at a high personal cost. So I had a friend and her father, he was a drug dealer and a pimp. My mother was never around, so you know, I always spent a lot of time in her house. And her dad, you know, he would always hit on me and touch me. But I never told anyone I didn't have anyone around, so. How old were you? Um, I was 12. And... I'm sorry if I'm gonna ask you this and tell me if you don't wanna answer or if you don't even want the question, we can take it out, but did he rape you? Yes, he did. When you were 12? Yes. And, and then how did it progress from there? He told me, like, it's OK. If you do it for me, I'm not going to judge you. No one's going to judge you. Don't tell anybody. So you know, I always kept it a secret. Like, no one ever knew what I did. And how did he convince you that you should be selling your body out on the, to other men? I didn't have a mother and a father around, so I grew up thinking that it was OK, you know, to sell my body. I was young. I was naive. Like, you tell me it's OK, and I just believed you. He was a pimp. Yeah. He had several women working for him. Yes. How many? Um, about five of us. All of them as young as you? Yeah. So they were all between 12? 12... 12 to like 15. No older than that. After four years, Honey finally escaped. Did he do any time in jail or anything? No, I didn't press any charges or anything like that. I just wanted to get away. One of the things that we hear a lot is how Women that have pimps, even when they're abusive, they just don't want to talk to the police. They don't want to testify. They, they just want to leave that behind. Snitches get stitches. So if you tell, people will put a bounty on your head, and they don't care how much it costs. Right. That's that's what they say. Anger. Meaning that they will beat you up if you talk. And they'll do it. They'll make sure it get done. Once you in it, it's hard to escape. It's always going to come back to you. Once you turn a good girl bad, it's hard to turn it back good. After the interview, Nina tells me she knows everyone on the streets, pimps included. 
She makes some introductions, I trade some texts, and it looks like it's all about to happen until it doesn't. We've been in three different locations so far, just today alone, waiting for these films to show up. They tell us they're coming, they tell us they're on their way, we get everything set up and we wait and wait and wait and then last minute, they either don't show up or they text us telling us they can't come or they're you know, unsure whether we're police and they don't feel comfortable. He just failed. He's not coming anymore. We actually just got a text from this one guy uh, who says he's on 54th and Western. He's on the corner. He told us he'd be waiting for us. We have no idea what we're walking into, who we're meeting with exactly, but we're hoping that at least there's somebody there. The process is frustrating. I've had easier times getting access to gun runners and drug lords, but I'm realizing this black market is different and darker. Okay. So this is it. We're in a parking lot of a laundromat. This is where he told us to meet him. No surprise, he's not there. It could be that he's just looking at us from somewhere and checking us out to make sure that we're not cops. In which case, it might be a good idea if I get out of the car and just go walk around and tell him I'm the woman with the red vest or something. What's that? No, taking pictures of me. They're filming me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think camera is down for now because they're getting more and more upset. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, come around the corner to 1609. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, we've got an address. Let's see what happens now. From Western, we turn into a residential neighborhood and make our way to the address. Finally, after months of trying, here I am, looking into the dark shades of a working pen. After months of trying, I'm finally face to face with a working pimp. He wants me to call him Chill. And this is his business partner, Lady P. I know that when we were texting back and forth, you were you didn't want to give us the right address immediately. So you weren't sure if we were police, essentially. Absolutely. Because of the business that we're in, if you're even claiming that you're in this part of the business, they've changed. So now, instead of just some regular where pimping is pimping, no, what we're doing now is considered human trafficking. And that is completely different from what pimping is. So tell me what is pimping about? It's about choice. They just see the flash, they see the gold, they see the money, they see the cars. Every time you turn on the radio, what do you hear? Oh, it's some rapper dude talking about how you got a bunch of bitches and all this other so what do they want? They want that rapper dude. They see the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, all that They want that What's next to a rapper? A pimp, why not? He can get you everything you want, easy. Drug, sex, rock and roll, that's what it is. That may be the way pimps like Chill view the lifestyle, but I imagine the reality is far more complicated for the women working for him. How do you find the girls? clubs, they see us hanging out. We're in the VIP section and we're drinking and we're having fun. Of course they don't want to be sitting over there with normal people, they want to come to the VIP. Hey girl, you want to come back with us? Who says that? I do. They come back. They see the glitch, the glamour, the gold, the cars, bikes. They want to smoke weed, do color, ecstasy. We have all that around couple of days after they've been there, okay, now you gotta come up with some money. Bill's gotta get paid. You got a choice at that point. You can say, I'm cool, get them out. 99.9% .9 of the time, these young are gonna be like, hey, I got weed, I got ecstasy, I got everything I want, and I can get some money out of it. Why not? 
Is it really that high? Like that amount of girl? Like the it's majority? not like you're going out looking for the classiest of females. You know, you with the ones that are ah, turned up. Or keep looking over at us. Keeps looking over. You can just keep on eye and watching. And she's already been spotted. Don't forget, I already just spotted her. It's a wrap. And at that point, the choice is made. Jill says that his women don't work out on the streets. They find their customers online where they can charge a higher price. So when people call you a, a sex trafficker or a human trafficker, what do you think of that? I think it's If you go talk to my bitches and ask them what they think, am I sex trafficking? They'll be like, yeah, he's, he's trafficking me to Miami, to Vegas, to Florida. Do you do that? Do you transport them? I don't transport them. I buy them a ticket. Here, go to the airport, get on a plane, see ya. When they come back, I'm gonna get a hit on my cash app and it's gonna be like, cha -ching. It's shocking how little is known about the underground sex economy. One recent study estimates that illicit sex in the US brings in $5.7 billion a year through street prostitution, online escort services, residential brothels, and massage parlors. But there's no reliable data about how many pimps and traffickers are operating or how many victims may be out there. It's rare to get an inside look at a pimp's operation, which is why I want to see others. Over the next week, I connect with two more pimps who are currently in the game. At a cheap motel in Inglewood, I meet Jack Knights. And after a bit of convincing, I sit down with Gotti late night at a bar near the airport. So these women, that do you meet them on the street, or how do you recruit them? How do you get them to work? On the street, nine times out of 10. Sometimes Instagram, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes Facebook, it depends. Yes, we can go anywhere and crack their thing down. Anywhere. What do you say to them? How you doing, beautiful? You mind if I hang out with you while you shop? And uh, we can talk and get to know each other? We hang out, become friends, and talk about how we can make money. And if they want to go along with the situation, we go do this. You butter them up? Or... Of course I butter them up. I, I got to tell them they're pretty so they can get out there and get this money. Mm -hmm. They got to be out here with a big head so they can get out there and get this bread. Is there a particular kind of girl that you're looking for? Somebody that's not showing fear, ready to go. An easy target would be, um, let's say, Jan Brady. If you're familiar with the Brady one, she's the middle child, and she's the one that gets the least amount of attention. She's the one that feels the most unattractive. I would show Jan the majority of the attention and point out how Jan is much prettier than her sister, Marsha. And Jan, when she leaves my presence, she goes back to being ugly in that house. So her self-esteem, her sense of empowerment, her will to be number one, or the fact that she is number one, is only present when I'm around. So she's gonna be around me more and more. I try to pin them down on the financials of their business, but they're evasive. Each admits to working a certain number of women. I'll say about seven. Six is the lowest, eight or nine at the most. Or now about four. These four girls work full-time for you? Yes. They only for me. And each takes a certain percentage of the earnings. Do they keep the majority, or do you guys keep the majority? Keep the majority. You guys keep the yeah. majority. If, if I'm taking care of you, I have to keep the majority. Absolutely. Can you tell me what the percentage is? Is it a higher percentage for them or for you? For me. It's my money. It's our money. This is an Auburn thing. So yeah, of course, you're going to get some money. I'm going to break you off something. Or I'm going to go buy you some or whatever. But you ain't going to get no money every single time. It's crazy to me. A woman sells her body, and these pimps feel entitled to the profits. And we're talking serious money here. A Justice Department study found that pimps can make between five and $30,000 a week. It's no surprise how some of them maintain control. Have you ever beat your woman? Um, next question. Take that as a yes, then. What leads a person to do that? What, what led you? My case, money was stolen. 
if they get out of line, if they look like they finna say something stupid, not, not slapped up, you might get punched up, whatever, <laughs> might cut you, whatever. Have you done that? Me, female ran away once or twice, I cut the bottom of her foot. You cut with a the knife? The bottom of her foot, nah, not with no knife. I cut the bottom of her foot with a razor. With a razor? What is you running away for? What is you doing? You got my money and all that? What you trying to do, rob me? No, what is you doing? When I did that, that let all the bitches know. So I ain't have to do that no more. I'm so like, if they want to leave, you don't let them leave? They can leave. They can leave. Because I'm not holding you. I'm not holding you at gunpoint. You're not, but you've admitted and I to. And I don't have you handcuffed. You say it's a choice for them, but yes. after you just told me what you did, I'm sure they're scared to death of leaving. She can still leave. I told her. I just told her, if you leave, you're going to remember me, though. But is she still with you? Yeah, she's still with me. She still works for you? To this day. You understand. It's either you're going to with me or you're not. It's so so you hold are? On, hold on. Go ahead. This pimp's out here doing way worse than that. Killing bitches. Out here kidnapping bitches. For real. Time up. No, nah, you can't go nowhere against your will. Bitch, don't talk to your family or none of that. It's bad out here. The reality is bleak and all too common. But there are people out there trying to make a difference. Be careful with the cameras because it's right in front of us. I'm in Los Angeles, not that far from where I live, trying to understand how pimps justify what they do. I think people listening to this would say that what you're doing is exploiting women when they're at their worst of their worst. You either stay and you have a place to stay and you go out on the streets and sell your body or we're gonna kick you out. Isn't that an exploitation? We're not out there beating on these females, choking them out, getting them started on drugs. We don't have a white van. We're not about to pull up and kidnap you. You can always leave. It could be worse. You could choose worse. Experts believe that the majority of the young women pimps and traffickers recruit, maybe even as high as 60 or 70 percent, have spent time in the foster care system. It's a crime that preys on the most vulnerable. Nobody cares about them. They're viewed as the rejected, and that's what makes it so easy for a pimp to recruit them. I love you. I love you. Your mother doesn't love you because she put you out. Your daddy doesn't love you because he molested you in the first place. I love you. If you haven't had something and you're experiencing it for the first time, and it's beautiful, you'll take it, even if it's ugly. Which part of it is ugly? You tell me. Telling your body. <laughs> you tell me. That's the ugly you're selling. So you do realize it's ugly, though, but you're still yeah, asking women to do but it. But you still said yes. Again, it's a choice. I mean, but is it a choice? It is. It is. We always have a choice. Everyone has a choice. Any prosecutor trying to bust a pimp like Chill for sex trafficking has to prove that he used force, fraud, or coercion to induce a woman into selling her body. That's a difficult challenge, especially when pimps like Chill know where the legal lines are drawn. I imagine that's why he and Lady P are so fond of that word, choice. Still, these days, pimps know they have targets on their backs. They just might be surprised by some of the people trying to hunt them down. Why don't you want to be on camera? For security reasons. We are gathering evidence against people who may in fact be criminals and who may in fact end up on a district attorney's target list because of us and I wouldn't want them to come back and try to kill me. Because these are dangerous people. These are dangerous people that we're dealing with. 
Jenna, as I'll call her, is a successful tech entrepreneur who lives in one of Silicon Valley's wealthiest zip codes. I'll say to our donors, you know what? We can do this. We have an established track record of success. We can find kids for under $20,000. I mean, what would you rather have? Another diamond bracelet on your wrist? Or would you rather be able to actually find a girl who's missing and save her? That's the mission of Special Operations, the nonprofit Jenna founded. There's no shortage of groups like hers who have taken up the cause of sex trafficking. But Special Operations is more aggressive than most. It not only rescues girls in trouble, it also goes after their traffickers. Special Operations is designed to fill in the gaps in society in order to solve sex trafficking crimes. The way the system works right now, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children sends law enforcement half a million tips. Polaris, the sex trafficking hotlines, sends thousands of tips. They can be months old by the time they land in somebody's file folder. 10-4, I'm in front of the hotel and making a copy. Jenna has connected me to her lead investigator, a former cop named Mike Ferrari. How long have you been after this guy? It's been on and off for about a year. I only have visual of Mark. I don't have visual of subject. Mike's team, which consists of three other private investigators, each in their own car, is currently working a case involving a man we'll call Ray. He has a history of trafficking minors. We know this guy is a serial predator. We've been trying to develop a pattern on him to find a location where there certainly are other victims, because each time there was an arrest made, there was more than one victim. How many girls does it believe that he has working for him? We know of three discrete victims that we've spoken with, um, but each one of them has talked about multiple girls. One time when one of the 15-year-olds was recovered, there were three other girls at that time. As is so often the case, though, the victims were too scared to testify against him. Sir, is he going to exit another one? I've got the back entrance. When he does somebody get on foot to let us know which way he goes out of the courtyard. Ray is expected to appear in court today for an unrelated charge. Assuming he shows up, Mike and his team will use the opportunity to hop on his tail. Mike is convinced that Ray is still trafficking, but they need evidence. Any new information this guy will help. But part of the, the purpose of our organization is to work on guys that do slip through the cracks. Yard door, that's you. So they have eyes on him on right there now. Hey, Mark's got direct visual to you. That visual is out on the street right now with his attorney. Um, cross street. Okay, Kirsten. Okay, here motion. he is. That's him right there on that corner. I'm in my car. Be careful with the cameras. Yeah. Discreet, discreet, but you didn't see us. Just looking. I got you. Walking down Fuller Street. Who has visual? Yes, Mark has eyes. Yes, Mark's to your right. I'm here, I got him. He's about to drive past me. Going through red lights left and right here. Hold on, I'm trying to keep us alive. Give me a second. I'm behind the subject. Mark's on one mile. 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 Mark's on one mile.
Traffickers are known to move victims between different counties and even states to keep them disoriented and to keep law enforcement guessing. This guy, he reports one address in the county across the bay, one address in the South Bay. He acquires the victims in another county. So you got multiple jurisdictions involved. You can have something happening on one side of the bay and then really, what, maybe four or five miles between the two, but there's no communication between law enforcement and sometimes the judicial system itself. So that makes it really hit hard to catch guys like this. Yes. Building a real case against Ray will take more missions like this one. If successful, Mike will then hand over his findings to law enforcement with the hopes they'll open their own investigation. But there's no guarantee. And all of this is to try and stop just one of the countless pimps and traffickers out there. Still, Jenna is convinced. This is a crime that money and a good network can actually solve. Maybe that's a bit of Silicon Valley optimism, or maybe it's the truth. But in thinking about money and resources and the ugly business of trafficking, there are other truths to consider too. As crazy as these pimps and prostitutes are, they don't cross King Boulevard. And once you cross King Boulevard, you cross into money. To the north of King lies the campus of USC, with its nearly $6 billion endowment. To the south of King, it gets rough quick. That looked like someone had dropped a bomb on it, like it looked war-torn. For Mickey, this divide explains everything about where you end up in life. Geography as destiny. Do we growing up in a certain area where we ain't got no resources, we ain't got nothing, we can't do this and that like certain other races can in their areas. There ain't no jobs around. You got a whole community that's not getting hired, and you got a lot of that's like, what we gonna do? I grew up around gangbangers, pimps. At 15, you're not thinking about it like that, but then now it's in your face and you're like, hey, why not? My brother was a pimp. And so you so just grew up? I grew up with it, yep. There was a lot of pimping going on. People in your family? A couple of guys in my family were pimps. So you think if you grew up in another neighborhood, in another place, totally in another different. city, you'd be different? It'd be totally different. I grew up with everybody around. Pimps, gangbangers, thieves, murderers, jackers, all these It's like one boiling pot. It's real out here. I grew up, and I thought that was right. I'm seeing as I'm growing up, I'm a kid. What the And I got people telling me it's wrong, but they got the money, though. How can I get this money? It's a tough situation, but it's a hustle. I make no excuses for these pimps, but I understand Jack Knight's frustration. It must be hard growing up adjacent to so much wealth and having so few options. But what makes pimping different than other hustles is that people's lives are in the balance. Most often, young women coming from their own difficult circumstances. So I'm actually surprised when Chill agrees to let me sit down with one of the women who works for him. When did you start escorting? About when I was 15, and I fell into the wrong guy, and it was horrible. And then I met Chill at a bar, and he just seemed like a nice guy. He is so sweet, honorable. He is always a man of his word. He does exactly what he said he's gonna do. He believed in my dreams. And he was just like, oh, like, I can help you. And he just started helping me. I quickly realized that something feels off. He never judged me. He just kind of took me in. And... It's the most glowing review of a pimp you could ever imagine. Do you give him part of your money, though? Um, yes, but it's, it's just the same as putting the money into my bank. Just like as if you would take your card out and make a withdrawal. Only mine is not a card, it's a person. So he's your pimp? I wouldn't call him my pimp because he's sweet. He's very honorable. You don't like to call him pimp. What, what do you call him? My friend. And I realize I have no idea how many of these details are true and how many of them are simply talking points to please her boss, who spends the entire interview looming over us with a pool stick in his hand. 
That's the tricky thing about doing these sex trafficking stories. When you drive down a street like Figueroa or International Boulevard and you see the women working, it's impossible to know their realities. Some of them are out there by choice, but some of them are not. Some of them are like honey. Do you ever get angry knowing that there's men right now all over the city, all over the country doing to women what you're pimp did to you? Yes. In my case, a 12-year-old, for one, they don't know what's best for them at the time. But I'm looking at an adult who can potentially guide me in the right direction, but I was guided in the wrong direction. So it always crosses my mind, like, if I never got introduced to this type of lifestyle, how would I be living? Or what would my life be like? Or how would I be? Would I be different? Would I still be the same? Like, I just feel sorry for the females out there who has to go through the same thing because it's like it's just destroying a woman's whole life. Uh-oh. Go get it. Now and I'm like to the point where I have a child of my own and I have to make sure that I have more than enough for her because I want to give her the world, you know, because she deserves it. You know, she didn't ask to be here. I brought her here. So I've been reading your book and I've been taking some notes here. A hoe to a pimp is worth nothing. She is actually worth everything. You take away everything she has, then give her what she needs. You, the pimp, are the cause as well as the solution to all her problems. You give her the poison, then sell her the cure. So this is something you... That's actually true. Pimping is premeditated. You know exactly what you're doing, and you know the long-term effects of it. You have to be a sadist, because you have to enjoy what you're doing, and you know good and well what you're doing. You know good and well what you're doing. 